Hello and welcome back to another video and something slightly different. Today we're going to be looking at the F1 2022 games driver ratings that were revealed today, June 24th, 2022. I'm on Planet F1. I will leave a link in the description below to these. There's also an article on the race as well, too, which will also be in the link down below in the description. Go and check them out. That's where I'm getting these numbers from. Obviously, the game is made by Codemasters, published by EA. I'm no way affiliated with them, so I can kind of say what I want. And of course, if you want to see any F1 game content from the channel, leave, let me know down below. Leave a like on the video. So, so here we go. The main categories that the drivers are based on is experience, racecraft, awareness, pace, and an overall rating. Based on that, how this random number generator makes them, we don't know. Experience, number of races, pretty obvious. Uh, racecraft, the, a driver's ability to work their way through the pack and finish in a higher position. So like Charles Leclerc did in Canada or Hamilton in Brazil last year or Max Verstappen in Sochi. Drivers who can do that will have a higher rating. Uh, awareness, so basically penalties you know like race kind of like racecraft like penalty points so drivers who spend less time doing penalties and visiting the stewards will have a lower awareness or a higher awareness i'm not quite sure how that one works anyway that's an odd one pace pretty self-explanatory and uh, driving beating their teammates in the races and how fast how, how close they can get to fastest qualifying and race lap times so when f1 do those ideal lap laps after fp2 on the friday how close a driver is to that relative to the rest of the weekend i think so this is based on and then the overall rating is a combination of all of those of the above so that should be quite interesting to see now i have a couple of predictions of who might be highest and who might be now, I see this doesn't include the legends, as far as I believe. I didn't actually scroll through this. I've only opened the article now. I haven't seen anything of them all since they came out about four o'clock when F1 published the video. A couple of the drivers doing the ratings, but here we are. So let's have a look. For the top five Verstappen, Hamilton, Leclerc, Russell, and Norris. Verstappen 94, Hamilton 94, Leclerc 92. Norris 90. Now, some of these must be based off last season and the previous seasons because some of these drivers have a lot of credit in the bank, like Hamilton. All right, the cards are dog this year, but that doesn't make him a bad driver, you know. I think 94 for Hamilton and Verstappen is fair. I mean, just because Verstappen won one world title doesn't guarantee them to be like a 94, 95 or above. And to be honest, I think 94 should be too high for anyone i think the limit should be about 91 92 but that's a totally different video charlotte Leclerc, 92 it's fair enough we saw the wonders he was able to do last year and all the previous years dragging the sf 1000 to places it shouldn't have been and this year two race wins what seven pole positions i think 92 is fair fair for him same second higher pace on average than the hamilton which is quite interesting which is Okay, what's the experience? 65. Uh, next up, George Russell in fourth place. 90, it's probably fair. Put that Williams places it shouldn't be. Last year, doing a stellar job in the Mercedes this year. Experience, I think it's a bit, a bit high considering he's had a year less than Leclerc. Leclerc's only a, a one, one point above him. How that works. I'm not quite sure. I, I get him and Lando having the same experience because they both have to an F1 at the same time. But that's fair, okay. Same for Lando, 90, perfectly acceptable. Um, good, next up, Alonso, Bottas, Perez, Sainz and Vettel in 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th and 10th respectively. Alonso, fair enough, 89, two-time world champion. Uh, he's plenty of experience, you know, he entered the one with the dinosaurs were roaming the planet, so 
good pace, solid. Bocca's having more pace than him. A bit questionable, but we move. <laughs> Perez is quite 88. He's six lower than Max, or seven lower than Max, uh, six lower than Max. Bear is also roughly rated the same as Carlos, who's slightly below him, which is also fair because Carlos hasn't been on that level yet this season. But he's very close in Canada. We're getting there with, with Carlos. He's not far off. The Canadian Grand Prix was a bit of a, a confidence booster. I think Vettel being an 85 is a little harsh. I think 86 or above, considering four-time world champion and all that. I think he should have had a lot more credit in the bank when it comes to this type of thing. Obviously, plenty of experience, racecraft, awareness, and pace. I think pace is a little bit harsh. 83. I think he's... Is he, is he really less pace than Pierre Gasly, who's 84? Probably not. Anyway, speaking of Gasly, 84, fine. Bit of a slow start this season. Great in the past, in the past two years, 2020-21. Solid. Ricardo, 83. I mean, if you were doing these ratings about four years ago, you'd probably say, if you said Ricardo, 83, you probably had your head hit across the top of the head with a cricket bat. But I think 83 is... Probably a bit generous now. I think 82 you could have justified as well. Also, 89 pace for Ricardo compared to Norris's 92. Uh, I don't know. It, it, the, over the past two years, has Ricardo had more pace than Bethel? I don't think so. Ocon, 83. Fine. Fine. Just fine. Albon, 82. Okay, so I can see it. I can see why. Once again, yeah, the experience that does make sense because he was also missing the other year out, didn't he? Uh, last year. Lance Stroll's Lance now Lance Lance Stroll eighty. I can understand. I think eighty one. He probably could have been. What's your experience? I don't quite get. He's been in the sport for six years. How is he only sixty five? When. Father Claire, who's been in the sport for four years, four or five years, is bloody also a 65. How does that make sense? So this experience thing is a bit of a, I'm just make it up as we go along type of thing. Like, it really makes sense. But anyway, I think Lance Stroll could have been 81. And Magnuson probably could have been 82. But that's okay. So no, have probably done a little bit harshly. I think he's had a bit of a downgrade since last year. I think 80 could have been probably what his rating should have been based on towards the end of last season but you know 78 a bit unfair Mick Mick's a difficult one because obviously he was paired against Mazepin last year and I mean, you probably put a, put Gene Haas in the car and he would have been just as quick as Mazepin so I think 77 is a safe one Latifi I think is generous 70 I mean he's been dreadful I mean when you think Albon's been out of the car for a year He's come in and he's beaten him already. I think 70 is generous. I think the rating 70 for Joe is also a little bit unfair. I think 71 you probably could have got away with. I mean, he's, he's got some, he's had some okay pace compared to Bottas this year, but it's spectacular. So 70, 71, that's probably fair. So that's the ratings for all of them. There is a, if you go into the race, which I've linked here, there's a, a breakdown of what all the drivers' scores are in, in each category there so race race pace and all that but that that will be it for this video uh thank you all very much for watching leave a like down below if you enjoyed it and if you want to see more f1 2022 game content let me know thank you all very much for watching and goodbye